Hello everyone, welcome back to the Lobby, GameSpot's weekly video game hangout here in San Francisco every Wednesday. I'm your host, Mike Mahardy, here as always with reviews editor Peter Brown. Hey. Rob Hanley. Hi. And that's not Callie Plaggy, that's Jake Decker. I'm not Callie. She is not feeling well today. She's also had a crazy couple weeks, so she's just either working from home or just resting. Uh, she finished Destiny, she finished Wolfenstein, she's just going to take it easy. Uh, so we brought Jake on, who's been playing all these games we're going to talk about, and you kept up with the Paris Games Week announcements, which we're also going to dive into. A lot of that stuff came out this week actually just when we thought uh just when i thought i had a handle on games sony dropped another news deuce on us as i like to say talking about housemark that's not sony but no no no. actually you were just talking about that before the <laughs> oh, show so uh, you got an email today the press conference i will go to an email that said arcade is dead from housemark the developers of rezo gun next machina matterfall super stardust hd and they're basically like uh, thanks for joining us making all these games and playing them over the years it's been a lot of fun but enough of you not enough of you spent money and bought them, actually. You got them through free services, and that's nice, but it doesn't keep a business alive, so we're changing directions. And that sucks, because those are all, most of those are really good games. Yeah, I'd say they're I'd all say very least, good, yeah. At, at the very least, like, I'd say Matterfall was maybe the most underwhelming one, but it was still pretty decent. Right, yeah. Yeah? Underwhelming for them, but still good. Damn. Yeah, it sucks. We'll see what they do next. Maybe something super unexpected and cool. Yeah, hopefully their talents uh, prove useful elsewhere. I'm sure they will. Um, we do have a, mo most of the news today is the Paris Games Week, uh, mainly the Sony exclusives that they announced uh, or upcoming stuff. I think the closest one now is Shadow of the Colossus, which is awesome. Uh, we might touch on Stranger Things season two, but we also have a full show, so we might not because that's also like heavy spoiler territory, and I don't want to talk about something we can't really spoil. Uh, then we're gonna also go deeper into Wolfenstein two. What makes it such a good shooter, and what makes Super Mario Odyssey an essential ten out of ten here at GameSpot? Oh, that's right. Yeah, that happened. you threw a you threw a Diaz on that game. I did throw a Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that more. Uh, we also have a giveaway. We'll talk about that later in the show, and we have another announcement. Uh, some GameSpot faithful are probably waiting for us to talk a little bit about Extra Life. Uh, I mean, I guess I might as well just talk about it now, uh, and I'll reiterate at the end of the show. Uh, for those who don't know, Extra Life, the uh, gaming marathon. It's usually a twenty-four hour marathon, but um. The, uh, it's essentially we, oh we play games for a long time and uh, we donate all the money to sick kids. There's a very terrible photo nice, of a few of us. <laughs> nice hair, Mike. Thanks. Someone found that. Uh, anyway, we do 72 hours. Uh, starting this year, November 17th, Friday at noon, we're going to start playing. Uh, and then for those of you who were here last year and the year uh, before that, we hand off to the UK team, we hand off to the Australia team, and we do 72 hours total. I believe we end up back here at noon on Monday. If that's correct, or we might, I don't think we end here, but we'll be back here uh, before it ends. 72 hours total, we'll be playing a ton of games, we'll be streaming the whole thing on Twitch, presumably YouTube and GameSpot. Uh, obviously, GameSpot fans can join us and make us do really terrible stuff for donations, including eating some weird confections that people mix up. Uh, Nick Margarita got a All right, Mike can Tyson we cut away? <laughs> uh, so, it'll be fun, and I know people were waiting for that. So, November 17th, noon Pacific time, we'll be starting. Uh, we are having a meeting later today, so we'll know which like major games we're going to play. Other than that, we're always open to audience suggestions, and I'll reiterate it again at the end of the show for people who are not here now. But as usual, if you're here on Twitch or YouTube or GameSpot, thank you for joining in the chats, and uh, I'll be monitoring those the whole time. We have some questions on Twitter about all the games that came out and all the Sony exclusives that got announced, but let's dive into it. Man, uh, not a Sony exclusive, but the Destiny 2 Curse of Osiris expansion, the first one for Bungie's sequel, is releasing December 5th. Got a release date. Are you guys excited for this? You, it's about damn time. Yeah? Yeah, you're... <laughs> you, well, you've been super into Destiny 2, well, compared to the first game, right? Yeah, and I feel like I've exhausted my interest in it. So, while I am joking, I mean, it's pretty quick for an expansion, I feel. Uh, I do kind of... I'm glad to see it's coming soon. Yeah. Because I'd like to keep playing the game, but right now it's not giving me a reason to. I was talking to Jean-Luc. Uh, he was saying... I was asking, is this kind of the same time frame that uh, the, first, the Dark Below expansion came out for mm. the first game? And I actually think it kind of was. They kind of get right on this. I mean, it makes sense. They're trying to keep people invested in this game. I have not played much of Destiny 2, unfortunately, but I think more people in the office have been playing Destiny 2 than played Destiny 1 at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, Jake or Rob, are you two? Jake, are you still in on Destiny 2 or no? I, I kind of tapered off, but that was mostly because, you know, Wolfenstein, Mario, Assassin's Creed all came out the same day, so I kind of had to. But I was kind of getting getting tired of the grind, but this does kind of reignite that fuse, I'd say. I'll, I'll probably yeah. play it. Um, I have the season pass, so I might as well. Oh, right, yeah, because the limited edition, whatever it's called, came with it. Yeah. Rob, have you, been you played a lot of Destiny 2, right? I played a lot, uh, but absolutely fell off in, in that there were just other things to do. We're lucky enough to like have so many games to cover, but at the same time, like I just 
I don't know. There were other things I needed to play, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know. That trailer kind of looked really samey. Yeah, it does. You know? I mean, but I, I'm not one to, like, point at Destiny stuff because I just don't know the game. And, and I, I don't know what to expect, I guess, out of a, an expansion. Because I, I, I never I never really played the first game long enough to... I would need to see, like, a spreadsheet of, here's all the new gear, and yeah. here's, you know, like, <laughs> right. at a glance, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, yeah, I would say don't expect like a Taken King level of a revamping. I would say I like think new enemy types. From what like I understand, that. it's going to be more just more of the same, but just more rather than like Taken King came back and actually reworked how Destiny worked. I don't think they need to do that yet. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Obviously, Destiny Two is not in, in as uh, shaky as a spot as Destiny One was at this point. I think. I think they figured out a lot of the kinks. Uh, they'll probably improve it in the future, but. As far as actual like quality of life and structural changes, I don't know that there's going to be a lot with uh, was it Curse of Osiris, but uh, yeah, that's December fifth, uh, and we'll have more leading up to that. I believe there's a event next week in Bellevue that we're uh, Bungie's gracious enough to be inviting us to, so we'll be checking that out. That uh, that character Osiris is a big deal though, right? Yeah, he's like he's understand. like com- I don't know. I, I just <laughs> I feel like of the of the lore and stuff that I've looked into, like that guy like. Has been like kind of floating around. Yeah, like there like, was like the plains of Osiris was a thing, or am I just making up a cool landscape? He's that, he's, that he's a sound like a cool. Sick. He's he's like a he's basically a warlock that went like kind of crazy, right? Like to extreme or something like that. Went rogue. Went rogue. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. No, that sounds right. I, I I don't like his helmet. Yeah, or is like it's like, a, like a feet. Like a yeah, I don't like that. It's, it's like, like an pharaoh. Assassin's Creed thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's December fifth. Cool. Uh, Spider Man. We saw more of this from Insomniac. Uh, they showed off more Miles Morales. He'll be playing Spider-Man this time around. Wait, will he be? Is it? Is, no, Miles Morales was in the trailer. Uh, but anyway, Insomniac showed off at Spider-Man. Uh, quarter one, quarter two, still in 2018. You guys said this was mainly cinematics from what yeah. you watched. I kept, I got it's, up on this it's, afterwards. It's a very superficial assessment, but it's giving me strong Quantum Break vibes, and I don't like it. Oh, man. <laughs> um, I, I, need, I need to see a whole lot more continuous gameplay, like uncut, before I can get real excited about this. I agree. I think, though... I, I mean, Insomniac, though, is usually pretty good about gameplay. They are. No, totally. Um, so I'm not super worried about that. But yeah, it is kind of weird that we still haven't seen an extended set of gameplay, series of gameplay. What worries I mean, me is the combat that I've seen. And I need the, to see yeah. more of that. Yeah, yeah. I guess the combat is more worrisome than the movement. I think the movement will be sure. yeah. pretty good. The E3, uh, I mean, that was the last thing they showed at E3, right? right the, uh, the, the The long, like, kind of rooftop combat stretch yeah but it, it looks good it was but it was a lot of that like you know contextual zipping back and forth automatically across groups of people like arkham i i personally games. just i just don't have any interest in that style of combat it's it's too uh it, it strips me of like what i feel like is my own accomplishments in a mm. way didn't i saw a headline today too that you will be able to play as mary jane as well sick so that's oh kinda, this trailer kind of hinted at that hinted at that they had did. like a oh, okay, weird cool. kind of like that was a weird, like weird kind of like pan into like it, it totally seemed like a third person. Uh, okay. Mary Jane, Mary Jane. I like you. I don't know what sort I of like stuff? was implying. Well, like what could you do with her? Would you expect? I don't Walk, know this series. Fight crime. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Kiss cool. upside down. Kiss upside down. Kiss upside down. <laughs> okay, sorry. I believe you are Peter Parker, but Miles Morales factors into this. Who the heck? And I'm sorry. Miles yeah, Morales is another person that plays Spider Man. He's he was in the he was in the trailer with Peter Parker in this. Sacrilegious. Yeah, I don't know. I, I <laughs> fell off of uh, Spider-Man. But. When was that ever a thing? In, like, comics? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you not read the Spider-Man comics? I did not. Neither do I. Uh, so that is just quarter one, quarter two next year from Insomniac. I like most of the stuff Insomniac does, and but like you guys said, it wasn't even just the combat. It was the traveling through the city and all of the actual... It, all, it was all contextual, kind mm-hmm. of like... It seemed way too choreographed, and I want to be able to improvise as Spider-Man. Do you guys play Spider-Man 2? Yeah, I did. I played a lot of that game. game. Fifteen years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. Like that I definitely want to see the more like free roaming, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it looked cool, like, to see in again I'm referring to the E three trailer of like his webbing actually locking onto like tangible things, you know? Yeah. Opposed to those other games where he's just like oh. in the sky. <laughs> in the sky. <laughs> just clouds, well, I guess. I I remember you said you mentioned Spider Man two, and that one you actually had to attach to buildings, but I think Spider Man three right after was like a huge downgrade and you were just like swinging on air and like Yeah. Like, All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a uh, Dan Cummings stand up bit where he's like, What happens like when Spider Man's out in the open, like in like a field? Where it's like the one building in town <laughs> in like Midwest? He's like Come closer! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just screwed in Kansas. Uh, Superman would kick his ass there. 
I don't like Superman anyways. I think Superman will kick his ass anyway. No. Not if there's kryptonite involved. Don't you, don't you know anything? The Hong Kong massacre? Top down twin <laughs> or sorry. Uh yeah, top down twin stick shooter. Did you guys see anything from that? Smaller indie game that they showed off yesterday. I saw what fun. you just described. People are people <laughs> are describing it as Max Payne mixed with Hotline Miami, but everything's Hotline Miami these days. Spider Man is Hotline Miami mixed with Batman. Uh, but anyway, this is the Hong Kong massacre that we're seeing here. Uh, I kind of I don't know much about it outside of the fact that it's a top down twin stick shooter. Looks like a little noir setting. It could be cool if the story really works. Otherwise, I'm not interested. Yeah. How many games we got like this? Uh, it's yeah. the very first game from an independent two-person studio in Sweden called Vreski, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, but it was first revealed in 2014, being built from the ground up in Unity. So we'll see what happens with this. Uh, but they do have a development blog where they're kind of talking about hunting down the leader of a Japanese gang in modern-day Hong Kong. Um, they also showed off the Gardens Between, which is another smaller indie game, according to yes. our news uh, news story. It's a Captain Toad-like PS4 puzzler called The Gardens Between. Yeah, this looks pretty interesting. Apart from being, you know, a sensitive game or a game for sensitive teenagers or people like me who wish I was still a teenager. <laughs> um, Damn it, just angsty all the time. Yes, yeah, I don't like being an adult. Um, what else is new? Isn't it weird how? Um, didn't like a weird number of serial killers end up having uh, the oh catcher boy. in the rye next to their bed or something that they oh. read all the time? Isn't that a? I don't know if that's an urban myth or if that's true. Well, I read that. I don't think we'll ever time. know. <laughs> I'm gonna freak out one of these days, and you're all. Um, <laughs> uh, but this look, no, th this looks like a really sweet game that's got a really you know solid aesthetic going on. Um, and the Captain Toad stuff seems to be related to the fact that like you know you're not bounding all over the place and doing these really crazy actions or using your environment to get places and yeah. solve puzzles. So Art direction kind of looks like rhyme a little bit. Maybe that's just the cell shaded mm -hmm. kind of issue. Yeah, it reminded me of like Oxen Freeze sort of concept art. Or yeah. uh, what's the game recently? It's like XCOM with Oregon Trail that you oh, did yeah. some stuff on when you're going across oh, the country. Oh, uh... Oh, Outerlands. Yeah, yes. Outerlands. Outland. 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 Not Outerland. Nope. That's something else. It's not it. I, 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 I we'll can't remember, but it. I know exactly what you're talking about. Over, Overland. 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 Thank you. Yes, I knew Overland. it was an oh, what something a risky like. game title. I know. <laughs> yeah, clearly it stuck. Uh, but also, we saw more of David Cage's Detroit Become Human. Uh, I put this at the top of uh, a list of games I don't really care about, but they showed off more of it. A lot of people are wondering if David Cage is going to be able to pull off the whole abusive father thing. So let me get this straight. Like, based on this trailer, is she made in the image of his former wife who left them? That's what you kind of, what seems to unravel. No, which, uh, the daughter shows a picture of basically, you know, if you're playing as this, uh, like, android, mm -hmm. uh, her head decapitated, saying, this is what happened to you. You don't remember because you just got uh... wiped. Um, this, this was the first trailer, I think, that... Real, I mean, of the trailers they've shown that really kind of rub me into interest. Like, this seems really. <laughs> that was so horrible. Those words I just lined up. Yeah. But we're gonna ignore that. Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> and, laughing at something else. But it seems really heavy. Yeah. Like, what's going on? I mean, and, but the gameplay, I I still don't understand. Like, it's, it's you just pick a choice. It's like a choose your own adventure. Just it's, like yeah. heavy rain. I, so far. That's what's kind of frustrating. Then is because like. Are are the, are all these scenes then just like? Have you played a David Cage game before? Maybe that's the correct way to start okay. this conversation. Have you? No, I have so not. It, I have not played. They're kind of like two souls. Telltale ish, sort of. Right. Um, but like, are, are they are they thing? implying that there's heavy re replayability? Like, yeah. is yeah. this something? Is this something that like? I'm expected to like play yeah. again and again. It's well, it, replayability well, is one aspect. It's more that the game is ref it can flex to whatever you would like to do. So it's it's more or less that it's a, a story that's got a beginning and an ending, but you can kind of you know get through it in your own way more or less, and always sort of be able to exercise something different. Yeah. It's also weird that every time they've shown it at a show, it's been a, almost a completely different set of characters and environment. Last time. Yeah. It just sounds stupid because the actor that they used in it, it was showed the actual like uh, replicant uprising in the city. It was the actor from Cabin in the Woods who plays the smart archetype. Uh, he's in other stuff too. But Screech. Really? No. No, that's <laughs> Saved by the Bell, right? Yes. Okay. I'm, I don't. He's a, a weird reference. That's why I'm confused. Ugh. I mean, Heavy Rain too had multiple characters, so I would be surprised yeah, if that's right. something that Maybe they'll call he does again. Somehow. To be honest, like I. I, I'm interested in this game. Yeah, I, like I know a lot of people like to hate on David Cage, and sometimes rightfully so. Like I don't think he is the best at handling some of these serious 
topics and, and themes. But that being said, like I, I'm willing to give it a shot. Like the presentation, I think is looks great, yeah. and I, I really liked Heavy Rain. Did you like Beyond? Two I souls? enjoyed Beyond. I didn't think it sucked. Like a lot of people thought, I I, I had fun with it. But I remember that when the first trailer came out, that like they're like, oh, she's part of the CIA, and that was when it all disappeared. For me. <laughs> I don't remember. I didn't pay attention to it much. It's so, I, don't know. I think we have to address kind of a little bit of controversy, or at least a discussion around this yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, Cause like right now everyone's really upset because okay, it shows abuse and uses that as sort of like the fulcrum for like this scene. And everyone's very wary of the fact that David Cage might not really be able to handle this. And like everyone's saying, yeah, you know, let's give him a shot. Like that's fair. We do need to see this in context. But he, there was a bunch of interviews that went out yesterday and he could not for the life of him give a solid explanation as to why he has to use child abuse and abuse against women to get his story across. He goes, it's a heavy theme. They're like, right, but why that Why that specifically? He goes, because I wanted something emotional. It's and like, then his other defense was always like, would you be asking a film director the same thing? Right, right. It's like, yeah, and they would probably have a, <laughs> an answer as to right. why they're using it. Exactly. So, you know, I think uh, people are yeah. up in arms about this quite a bit because David Cage has a really kind of crappy track record when it comes to this sort of stuff. And would it be that surprising to see him fumble this one again? No. Will he? I don't know. Maybe he's learned from his lessons and he doesn't know how to interview properly. But Yeah, it wasn't also like, what were we, we going to say? Well, I, I just think that like the novelty of some of his older games kind of, kind of mask that sort of poor, not poor writing, but it kind of masks some of those weaknesses. And I think now that it's so realistic and people are kind of used to like the whole David Cage stick, like, oh, right. we know what the, this next David Cage game is going to be. Now people are a little bit more paying attention to the writing and the storytelling and how right. that works and yeah I, and what I, he's actually trying to do exactly yeah. I, I don't know if he'll be able to pull that off but i'm curious definitely curious yeah it's uh i wish you could just explain it a little bit better <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not the only trailer that uh was kind of brutal but i guess we'll get to that later just to not throw off the order of the b-roll uh jake and rob i'm not doing this to call you out i'm actually very excited for you two you have not played shadow of the colossus uh february 6th 2018 you'll be able to play it on ps4 blue point who, uh, Pete, you were talking about them a lot yesterday. A, a studio that does some <laughs> great remakes. Uh, walk me through them. They did Titanfall on Xbox 360. They did the Metal Gear Solid Leg Legacy collection. Yep, keep going. Uh, you among, got this. No, you, help me out because I forgot uh, they already. They did the Gravity Rush remaster yes. for PlayStation 4. They did the one of the God of War collections. They did the Eco and Shadow of the Colossus PS3 uh, remasters. And that was more of a port compared to this, right? Yeah, yeah. This I is think you could say that's a slight remaster. This is a full-on remake. You know, outside of the concepts and what the game is actually having you do, pretty much all the assets and systems and interaction and stuff like that seems to be just remade completely. Uh, was this 2008? Uh, I don't know. That year, I feel like no. the game released this game, in 2005, I believe. Yeah, I could be wrong. Closer. I think it was 2005. PS3 must have been, what, 2009, 10 or something? Uh, maybe a little after that. But yeah, the game was originally 2005, unless I'm grossly mistaken. I can look that up. Uh, but yeah, you guys, so you don't even know some of like, the story stuff. And I'm not going to talk about it at all because I mean, it's, it's a very minimalist story, but there, it's, it's effective. Um, but you know the idea of the game. It's just 16 huge bosses mm -hmm. of varying sizes and stuff. And Why'd you say 16? Lonely World. Well, that's, that's a spoiler, dude. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You guys, I'm assuming you'll, after everything you've heard, you'll be interested in playing this on February 6th. Yeah, I, I liked, yesterday we were like chatting about it because this trailer actually uh, was really impressive to me, like for a game that old, right? Like the hair texture, uh, we have some gameplay o over the shoulder uh, or off, off screen mm -hmm. gameplay that uh, I believe Adam uh, from the UK took, but like it's still you can still tell how the quality is like surreal. Like, I don't know, like just the, for a game this old, like the hair on these bosses. Every, all of this and, like, is redone the, though. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, so you're saying for a game this old, that actually doesn't matter. This, this looks is, good. This is all redone. Yeah. This what? right here, the footage we're seeing is P it's redone. It's not just ported. Like, well, like what is, so what does redone exactly mean then? Like completely they, redone like, from scratch. Yeah. Like if you saw like, this, they, they, the they, is, they literally like shoved the table clean and like, Yes. Yeah, That's they also reworked crazy. the crazy. <laughs> well, the part the part that I'm really excited for is that they actually they've been saying they reworked the controls a little bit, which the controls themselves were always kind of intuitive, but they were always a little bit janky and uh, clunky in my opinion at least. Like uh, the main character, his name escapes me right now. His horse is Agro. His name will come back to me. It always does. He it was he was kind of floaty, and when he's climbing, it was almost like I mean, you're, it's very much based on your grip. You have an endurance meter kind of where you're climbing these colossi, and if you lose your grip, you fall off, obviously. But 
and you know, it's about stabbing weak points and shooting with your bow, but uh, it's very much, it was always kind of loose, but they've said they're reworking a lot of it to actually feel better. Uh, That's insane. On these, on these uh, with these new controls. Um, um, is, they is they that, were showing it off yesterday at uh, Par- the, we had a Paris Games Week event here and I got to check it out and yeah, I've never played it, but it looked fantastic. It looked gorgeous. Like I'm so excited for this. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. that's essentially what the studio does is just like from the ground mm-hmm. up. So this is the first time they're doing that. Okay. In the past, they, they had mostly done remastering and porting. So for like the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, you would have seen them like, yes, port the games a little bit, but then also remaster some of the graphics, which means taking old textures and updating them or, you know, essentially doing a high res copy. There's a lot of that going into this. Like they're using the original like source material, but not necessarily the original assets. So everything will bear the same identity that it had back then, but the actual assets they're using in game, as far as I'm aware, are all created from scratch. How, how can you? How can they art? Like, I mean, uh, this game is really great. Uh, 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 people like seem to praise about this game, but I just find that like kind of fascinating. Like, as far as like the budget like involved, right? Like that's more work. Yeah. To, to do something like this, like how. How do you, how does a studio like argue for that? I guess like is it just based on the fact that this game is just so renowned. Well, I mean, Sony's in control, and yeah. Sony's a platform holder, and they'll always do what they can to get the upper hand, even if it means spending an extra dime. So okay. I'm sure that they told Blue Point, "We like the work you do. We want you to apply that to a game that we already love, but we just want you to make it feel fresh, not just updated, but fresh." Okay. His name's Wander, by the way. Thank yes, you. And right. in Japan, the name of the game is Wander, Wander and the, the Colossus. Colossus yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's Fumeto Ueda. I might be mispronouncing that. Ueda. Close enough. Ueda. F- Fumeto Ueda did Last Guardian. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, which I didn't personally like as much as this or Ego. I know. I know most people liked Last Guardian. Um, but still, I'd say that's Well, I don't want to talk about the stories, but here, this is the first Colossus you fight. Um, but it's it's awesome. Like I, I mean, I was chatting with John Luke a lot yesterday. Everybody has like their favorite Colossus that they remember. Mm. These are it's just a boss rush, but yeah. man, that's so reductive to say because it's also right. in this like super lonely world. It's massive, you know. Like you hold your sword up to find out where to go next, and well, and most notably, the bosses are essentially levels in and of themselves. Yeah, yeah. because you climb on their bodies and there's have like to platforming do so in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And there's been a few games that have tried to mimic this. Like I'd say. Maybe the most notable, unless I'm forgetting something, is something like Castlevania Lords of Shadow. The first one yeah. had a bunch of bosses that incorporated it. And it was a great game, and those, I thought, and those boss battles are pretty good, but it's not something you see mimicked very often elsewhere, uh, which is kind of too bad because it's a really neat concept, but just kind of goes to show like how impressive this game was and probably will continue to be, especially for people who've never played it before. I remember God of War, like yeah, two and three tried to do that. Um, God of War 2 came out like right after Shadow Colossus, I believe, and then God of War 3 later on. But those were more, it wasn't, there wasn't as much agency involved. It would be like those quick time events that God of War right. made so pervasive. Uh, and you'd be climbing up fighting Poseidon on a Titan I forget, at the beginning of 3. And then at the beginning of 2, you're fighting the Colossus of Rhodes. Oh, interesting enough, Colossus. But yeah, it was, it was just massive scale bosses. And like some of the bosses in Shadow Colossus, I think later on in the game, the average time it'll take you to beat some of them is like 40 minutes. Yeah. What? Um, it gets up there. Oh, yeah. The whole game is just boss fights, but technically, but like Pete said, it's, they're very much levels unto themselves. But I forget what the final boss takes. It can take upwards of an hour once you, when you're figuring it out. Because there's um, different Because there's, I was about to say yeah. stages. So you get thrown off, and then there's like a stage two type thing, or like you, his, I mean, yeah, his shell cases, breaks. Yeah. You can so see his weak point yeah. on his calf right there. Right. Um, and then. First time I played it, I didn't even know you could find those lizards that upgrade your health uh, in the world. Right. Yeah. Uh, I just did it without those, but this cool. Same, same. Anyway, yeah, this game is fantastic. I I hesitate to even call it a cult classic, although I think it is, but I think it sold better than that, like too well to be called a cult classic. Um, It's fantastic. I'm I'm excited that you guys don't really know much about like what happens in the game because that's I would I'm very jealous that you're going into it fresh and do everything in your power to keep it that way. Yeah, and I'm and. I am glad you guys. <laughs> there were a couple of things I said yesterday, like, "Oh, she, he's carrying around this," Yorda? and you guys, and you guys were just like silent. I was like, "Okay, I'll stop." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Yorda, whatever her role is, Yoda, Prince, is princess, or Yoda. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Shadow the Colossus. Kind of not, colossus as you do. not too far away. February sixth, twenty eighteen, next year. Uh, <laughs> another game that kind of piqued my interest and a few other people. Uh, Concrete Genie, uh, kind of a little more like angsty stuff. He finds a magic paintbrush, and uh, his illustrations come to life in these back alleys. Uh, it kind of, the idea of it reminded me a little bit of dreams in terms of like using your own creativity. But this seems much more story driven and not as like just based on what you want to happen in the world. Obviously, dreams being that PSVR game, but this looks super cool. Yeah, 
did you guys watch this whole oh yeah gameplay demo? <clears throat> it, yeah uh, it, it seems really neat like yeah the the, the drawing gorgeous. aspects yeah it looks really good art the art style's great I like like kind of like the combination of like kind of like stop animation yeah like it reminds me of like those Coraline and what was the uh Cubo is that the last one? Kubo. Uh, Kubo. Kubo. Kubo and the Excuse two me. strings? Yes. Uh, is that it Kubo? S- no. Ding, ding. Yeah, it is. That stop animation know. style is insane. Or, um, I'm pretty sure it's Kubo. But, yeah, the drawing looks fun. God, I, like, this This looks really fun, like, as far as... I mean, I, I also wonder, like, how, how much of, like, your own, like, creative impact do these drawings have? Like... He's fighting it, off... It, are, are the styles all the same? Like, I don't know. Like, I'd I be... Mean, I'd be interested to see like different people's art if that's something how flexible it can be. In that. Yeah, yeah, like something to compare to. Like, oh, I drew this. Is how different is this compared to you? Like, it, are, are these more linear based like drawings? Like, I don't know. Like, how much does it constrain you? Yeah, Play- PlayStation exactly. was uh, describing it as a puzzle, uh, part puzzle, part action platformer. So that kind of leads me to believe it won't be just free reign. Um, and there is the story of you uh, fighting back against these bullies in these back alleys of a town called Denska. I don't know if it's supposed to be modeled after a certain uh, region. Maybe it like seems Eastern like, Europe or something. It seems like this town is empty except for those bullies. Yeah. They're the only ones yeah, who live in the city. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing he found a magic... What, what if you picked I up a magic move. paintbrush in this town? You're like, you couldn't have given me a gun. <laughs> He's just, here's a fucking paintbrush. Uh, it looks very, very cool. It looks gorgeous. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to seeing more from that. And I'm looking forward to hopefully in the end these drawings bust out of the of the walls and, and eat kick the bullies and just kill <laughs> these bullies. And he's like, "Whoa, uh, <laughs> I gotta um, go." So, so an interesting little tidbit. I found this on Engadget. The creative director Dominic Robillard, uh, creative director of Sony Studio Pixel Opus, his first gig in video games was testing Jet Set Radio, and he said the artwork of that heavily inspired this, or at least the idea of that game. The art direction kind of bled Graffiti into this man. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, cool. Something I'm super excited about, Spelunky Dose got announced as well. Uh, didn't really see much gameplay, if any. I think it was all just these photos showing, yeah. like, apparently you're the next generation yeah. uh, of people going, seeking after Yuma or whatever. Um, but yeah, obviously, like, Spelunky itself is kind of, I would say, was in the early, one of the early games in that wave that was kind of repopularizing roguelikes, uh, procedural generation. Uh, obviously, like, it's platforming. Hardcore kind of uh, 2D. That dog was drinking out of a skull. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm really curious what they're gonna do to iterate on the first one because I mean, obviously we didn't see anything, but I I can't like there, when I play that game, it's not like there wasn't anything where I was like, oh, I wish they did this. I wish they did this. Uh, like like I love that game, and I think it's I don't want to say perfect, but I think it is one of the most like pure sort of roguelikes I've played. There's not much I could say you could do to that game. Yeah, like, here, yeah. I'm curious. Like, they kind of hinted at going to the sky. Right. Like, so I'm like, okay, so maybe it's, like, the same thing, but in space. Different but aesthetic. Yeah, like, I, I don't know how much is going to change or how much really needs to change, to be yeah, honest. Even just now on the, the the logo itself, the title screen shows the moon behind it. Yeah. I have no idea. Maybe instead of, yeah, going down, you're going up to some That's kind of what I'm thinking. Some, like, some different enemies, different, like, some tools gravity. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lack uh, of gravity. Well, last time I played... You were watching. I got killed by the shopkeeper like a goddamn casual. Did you steal from him? I, yes. I accidentally whipped him when I was I was trying to move the teleporter out from behind the freeze ray or whatever, and I accidentally whipped him, and he shotgunned me in the face. Didn't go well. I love that game, though. It's very good. Um, yeah, so Splunky 2, I don't believe, has any uh, release dates or anything. Announced for PS4. Just PS4, uh, right? Yeah, right now. As of now, PC and PS4. Uh, the first trailer came out, oh. uh, but coming first to PS4 and Steam, no other platforms have yet been mentioned, but the original came to numerous systems, and the use of it first suggests it might be like a console-timed exclusive. Cool. Uh, I'm really excited for that. We also have Guacamelee too. Yeah. Uh, Lunchbox, the studio behind Drink the first box. one. Drinkbox. Drinkbox. <laughs> Close. Thank you. There we, almost. Uh, first one, super like... like you know, like Mexican luchador aesthetic uh, storyline, but also it's a Metroidvania game, kind of, but with a little more involved combat with combos and everything. You can get very vibrant uh, Dia de los Muertos aesthetic and everything. Uh, the first one was great. I loved it. Uh, I have too many memes for my liking, sure. but overall, that game was uh, really much very awesome, super good, yeah. rad, cool times. <laughs> and now, uh, Guacamelee 2. I didn't, did they show gameplay in this or was it all? They showed a bunch of Guacamole? gameplay, Michael. Really? Yeah. Was it? Does it look good? Does it look? Does it look different at all? No, nope. oh, it doesn't look different. Yeah. The character <laughs> is returning. 
This I is mean, another thing. Like, what can you do to this? Well, this does look like the first. If you showed me this, I would say, oh, that's Guacamelee. I, I, I could have done with a new character. Instead of this, the Luchador, Lucha, whatever his name is. I, I forget his name, but yeah. I, yeah, it's a small thing, but just seeing the same character over again, and, and at least in the format of a trailer, I'm like, I wish there was something I could point to. There's four player local co op support different. now. Right. And also, you could turn into a chicken. You could turn into a chicken in yeah, the previous <laughs> game. I think that was, that was like the big crux of this trailer, at least what they were trying to sell, was new chicken ability. Are you and sure you like, can really okay. transform into a chicken? In the first one? Yes. Yeah. I don't think you can transform into I'm a chicken a, in the first one. Instead of really? turning into the ball, like in Samus uh, or yeah. uh, Metroid, you turn into the chicken. I will, how much money do you want to bet? No, no, no I'm, not, I'm not like... Well, no, I our, just want to make some money. I our make news some story money is too. wrong then. Whoever wrote this, I'm going to call him out. You are wrong. So you and Chris Pereira have to duke it out because he said it's a new ability. Chris Pereira don't know Guacamelee. Uh, seven years after the original story, Juan Aguatate is living a happy life with his family when his friend and trainer Uaichivo discovers a new evil menace that threatens to destroy not only Mexico, but time and space itself. Uh, that'd be awesome if this came to Switch. Not just... It probably probably will. Yeah, makes sense. I, I, I'm, I love the first one. I thought it was fantastic, but it came out at a time where there weren't like a ton of Metroidvanias. I feel like yeah. now they've been so many I feel every time I check Steam there's like five new Metroidvanias so I'm curious how much time I'll actually want to spend playing this especially after like Samus Returns which I thought was this fantastic game, I feel like it's the personality and the combat that that's really true so, so the combat definitely I thought was a lot of funny and the personality but I don't know maybe I'm getting sick of Metroidvanias Maybe you are. I don't Maybe mean to be giggling behind the scenes. Know. Eric yeah, Green, a, a friend of the show, <laughs> said, consider me rubbed to interest. <laughs> uh, Jake, you've been waiting for this. Uh, Last of Us Part 2. Another, the second trailer, I would say. Yeah, the first so, one was yeah, just Ellie and Joel and the, after she killed all those people in the house. This one was just a whole new set of characters, right? There wasn't anybody that we know. <laughs> yeah. In fact, like when it first started, a bunch of us were like, is this Days Gone? Because, and, but then like, the yeah, graphics right? look too good, and I was like, nah, I can't the, be Yeah, Justin Hale like, this is this looks too good to not be Naughty Dog. There enough bikers. Yeah, that, yeah, that too. Um, yeah. So, I, it, Jake, walk us through what was happening here. Uh, this this, this, this trailer us. definitely also drew some controversy. Uh, we can get to that, but what, what happened here? So, I, I, I only watched this trailer once, uh, unlike the first one, which I watched probably a dozen times, but... I mean, essentially, it seems like some occultish group or something is carrying a woman, and they're basically about to kill her. And there's also other people hanging off the trees. There's too. other people hanging off the trees, and then uh, it seems like some other faction comes and saves them, and they're debating whether or not they should save her. Um, yeah, they said she's she's one of them. So, but it was like the two people who were uh, almost saving her, the second girl they bring in, they were. A, Apparently part of the same faction. There were two younger kids, right? Yeah. They're like teenagers, maybe a little older. Heads are shaved. Looks yes. like Sarah Connor, though. It does, yeah. She's <laughs> jacked. Uh yeah. this was yeah, this is pretty brutal. And then Yeah, this is definitely Jake, you said you watched it once. I think I could only watch it once. Uh it was really intense. That and, that hammer the take off her wings, screw that. Yeah. That was hard yeah. to watch. I hate stuff like, like that. You, you, like, you, you knew it had to be Naughty Dog, like what Justin was saying, that mm -hmm. like this is clearly Naughty Dog, it looks too good. But, I mean, honestly, there was nothing that really pointed it to The Last of Us until that end sort of yeah. clicker noise. I was waiting for like a Firefly tattoo or something to show that's up. What, that, yeah, I figured you'd see that on at least one of them. It's definitely a cultish though, because the things they were saying, they were saying like clipper wings, and then also... She's but, full of sin or yeah, shit. and then all the people hanging have their guts cut out, so it seems there's definitely some sort of religious inclination to it. Um, or if, uh, I never buy scenes like this in movies where like the villain is about to kill someone, and like there's a noise, <laughs> and they're like, "I'm gonna stop what I was doing that I've been trying to do for months just to turn around and look at what's happening." I Why didn't she just cut her belly? As much yeah, as I love right? Game of Thrones, I think Quickly Game of take Thrones care of this because I'm right here. <laughs> Game of Thrones does something like that every episode. Yeah. It's just like this person is clearly not gonna. I mean, well, that show's not afraid to kill people, or I think it well. leans too heavily on it, but. There's so many times it's just like, oh, this third party came in to save the day at the last second when they raised the sword above them. Uh, it's it's oh, not great. But yeah, they showed this whole thing. Uh, I'll look away. It's, nope. There's a TV there. There's so TV the there. controversy around this was that it was, it was just, I mean, obviously really brutal, but that's one thing. Obviously, The Last of Us was brutal, and if they're going for like a Cormac McCarthy vibe. But uh, another thing was everybody noticed like all the violence is... You, Aside from that, dude getting shot in the face is being done to women. I think the bigger problem here is it goes back to the, at least in my opinion, and not to belittle the second point, but the, if Naughty Dog is trying to, and Sony in particular, is trying to show what The Last of Us 2 is really all about, and <laughs> all they show is this, this trailer just about uber violence and torture and death, 
Like, yes, those are central things in The Last of Us 2, but that is just like a, it, that's a really unfortunate way to have to like bottle an entire game is with something like this. And I think people are just upset. Like, why? Why, why does it always have to be just uber violence that yeah. we look to as what makes a game interesting? Like, if yeah. I saw a trailer for just this and someone advertised Last of Us 2, I would say, I don't really feel like playing that game. Yeah. Like that that doesn't seem like my sort of experience. It's like torture and death. Like, and, and I, that, there's none of that shit in the real world. I don't. <laughs> right. And, and not clearly established like sides right like right, the fact yeah. that like, the fact that we can't point like we, right. there's three parties i guess attack like we don't know anything else right. um and I, so i'm on the same sentiment yeah. it's just violence for the sake yeah. of the violence at this point because yeah it, you could yeah. maybe assume that the girl that was being hung was one of the people and she betrayed them or something because they said one of them i have no idea or like if there are more um ellie types right like, if, is that now the world where there's, like, a separation of, like, who can be infected and who can't? I don't yeah. know. I, that's where my mind went. But, like, yeah. I mean, Jackie said, it. like, I only watch it once. Yeah. This is not I, a trailer I want to, like, dissect and go back I, to. Cause I think it's, it's pretty haunting. To to Peter's point, like, if I didn't know this was The Last of Us, I probably wouldn't be super interested in this game because yeah. it, it is... It, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, but, I mean... It is it is Naughty Dog, so I have faith that they will tell a very tight story that... It, I mean, it's like the opposite of sort of what we saw with David Cage, right? It's kind of like, ah, I don't know if you're going to be able to pull this yeah. off. But with Naughty Dog, I'm more than confident that they have the chops to, to pull a story like this off. But yeah, like I... And, and plus, I'd kind of rather see Joel and Ellie, and I, I understand why they're not showing it, maybe just to add suspense, <laughs> hold off on that. But still, it was like, I, I don't know these characters. I don't like, really care. I don't know how this helps advance the messaging around their game. I mean, we're talking about it, but it's not like we're sitting here like 100% positive. Like, it's created this sort of like weird talking point around it. Yeah. I yeah. Know. I mean, I would, I'm stoked like, so for the, it, though. The second trailer. Yeah. Um, they haven't really announced when that's going to happen. Presumably next year. Last of Us Part 2. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Love The Last of Us. If you haven't played that, go play that. Uh two more games that I want to talk about before we get to Mario and Wolfenstein 2 uh, that Sony showed off or announced. Uh, first off, God of War from uh, we two E3s ago. They first showed this and uh, they shifted from Greek mythology to Norse, presumably. Kratos, kind of a father-son story going on. Uh, I'm still super unclear. We were even talking about this right before the show. Is this the same timeline and storyline as when he was fighting Greek gods and everything and he was the god of war or is this separate and they're just using his likeness again because it's all Norse mythology and like maybe like a Ragnarok thing a la Hellblade which there's more than one comparison to that that I would make but uh, I don't know what do you guys think of this trailer Jake you were saying Kratos is kind of a shitty dad that was my takeaway <laughs> yeah just bringing his son on this, hor this horrible fight help me fight. fight these undead creatures that <laughs> seem to explode in lava and then he just like shames him for not being able to kill a titan right away or a cyclops <laughs> or whatever I don't know. Um, but yeah, I was saying it's kind of an odd... Before I played Hellblade, I was a little bit... Not concerned. It was, it was kind of having trouble wrapping my head around the idea of a fixed camera third-person melee game. Because obviously the older God of Wars were more like Devil May Cry or uh, Lords of Shadow in that they were kind of character action, uh, free-roaming, Bayonetta kind of camera third-person action games. Whereas this looks like Hellblade. It's like over the shoulder. Um, and before Hellblade, I didn't think it could be done well. Hellblade's combat looks a lot more vanilla based uh, compared to God of War, but uh, it looked they showed off like, actually more powers in this one, so it looks like it could be cool. I don't know. Everything they're showing about That's this right game now. doesn't really surprise me at all. Yeah. Did you like the God of War games back in the day? Hell the older yeah. Ones? When they like one and two, and then three, yeah, was like was pretty rad. But one and two had left, left a huge impression on me, and I think inspired a lot of the industry to kind of like figure out how to be blockbuster and creative, you know, all in one kind of package and super impressive series from the past. I, I, uh, I'm not really sure where it's headed though. The only I'm not sold on this kid, the only, honest. <laughs> the only part of, uh, the God of War's legacy that I looking back, I'm not super happy about is all like the contextual quick time events that I feel like they weren't the first game to do it, but they definitely, I think popularized it a lot more. Yeah. And I it still, was cool at the time. I think they can still be used in, in, in a good way, like when you're doing things that are beyond your capabilities in the game normally, but it's become a sort of a catch-all for involving you in cinematics, which can often be boring. The worst is when you're just not paying attention and they <laughs> jump you and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, the first E3 where they showed it off, 2016, you should go back and watch. We did the, uh, Corey Barlog, the creative director, came on stage back when like Danny was still here. And I think... 
I might have been on stage at that point with them. They talked about how the creative director's like own relationship with his son is kind of bleeding into it. Sounds cool. Uh, hopefully they can handle it well, but go out back and watch that. It's on GameSpot and YouTube if you want to check it out for more information. All right, there's been a lot of Sony games we'll be talking about before we get to more uh, games that actually came out recently. Last one from Sucker Punch, Ghost of yeah. Tsushima. Sucker Punch being the uh, team behind the Infamous series. Uh, and we've been, for a while, maybe like a couple of years now, people have been saying, I wonder what they're up to because they're like an internal, uh, or they, they've always, they've been making Sony exclusives so long. What are they up to? And they showed off Ghost of Tsushima, like, what starts off as a just kind of samurai-looking story set in on the island of Tsushima, uh, it became kind of supernatural toward the end when they were talking about it. Like it was the voiceover was from the, like some sort of villain talking to the protagonist. The Mongol. Oh, is it like the Mongol invasion that they're okay? You betcha, Mike. Yeah. This looks so sick. This well, does. Look it reminds me of Neo also, but that's just probably because Neo has a uh, super like samurai Beatles focus. Japan. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a, it looks gorgeous, but yeah. it's weird. It's such a huge jump from uh, Infamous, but it is open yeah. world they're talking about. Stealth so. as well. Yeah. Stealth will be a big thing, so still remains to be seen, but it looks promising. Uh, yeah. Tori Hanzo sword. So I think my concern, I, I didn't play First Light, which I heard was much better, but Second Son I thought was mostly just show. Like, I, I, I didn't think there was a lot of depth to it. I didn't. I didn't enjoy it that much. I think I played like four or five hours. I'm like, all right, I've seen my fill. I like the first two infamous is more, but like I'm, I'm I'm curious to see what kind of game this ends up being apart from just an open world uh, exploration game. Because if you watch the documentary after the, I think it was the creative director, right, which is just explaining an open world game, and it was like, okay, this sounds like you know every open world game. So I wonder what the twist is other than the setting, which does look dope. That actor just before this guy looked really familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, yeah, like, like here it looks it looks like it has a supernatural vibe all of a sudden, unless that was just like a, just the editing itself for the sake of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was. It's also interesting to see what companies are doing with open world games moving forward after in like a post Breath of the Wild. Not that every game needs to be compared to it, but like a post Breath of the Wild, Horizon was good, but I think Horizon was like the peak of the old open world design. I would say. Um, that's kind of being reductive, but um, or maybe like it's not the same as Grand Theft Auto, but in terms of like this looks like it would line up more with uh, something like Horizon rather than Breath of the Wild, but who knows? Um, yeah, like like you said, Jake, Second Son felt almost more like it was a showcase for the PS4 because that came out pretty early in the console's life cycle, not a few, maybe a few months after. I played it and I liked it, but it wasn't anything remarkable, especially the protagonist. I don't even remember his name. The, the beanie on. I don't like him. Beanie Boy. Uh, yeah. Del. Del. Dev. 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 Devlin. Del. Dev. Delvin. Del. Wasn't Devlin? Daryl. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, but anyway, what are you most excited for from the Paris Games Week announcements for Sony, Jake? Uh, I mean, probably The Last Guardian. I've heard so much about that game for so <coughs> long. <laughs> Shadow, Shadow of Colossus. Guardian. Oh my god. <laughs> Shadow of Colossus. We've all heard about Last Guardian for a long time. Uh, I've heard so much about the Shadow of Colossus, and I'm very, very excited for it. Also excited for The Last of Us, but kind of like what we said before, I that trailer didn't exactly get me more excited for it. Um, but yeah. What about you, Rob? Yeah, I think I, I totally agree with you. Because that trailer for Shadow of the Colossus was, was smart in showing the environments and like the solitude with that game um, because I keep hearing about these bosses, right? And they didn't show a single one in that trailer. Like, that was really great. And, and it was, it was yeah, it was just really smart to, like, just capitalize on, like, hey, like we really spent a lot of time, like, every bit of the way. Um, I'm stoked for that game, too. Uh, it was Delson Row. <laughs> Delson. Sorry. I remember it was some weird... How could we Delson? not think of that? Uh, yeah, I played Shadow of the Colossus, and I think that's still the one I'm most excited about. It also helps that it's coming out soon, so it's more tangible. Uh, but Ghost of Tsushima, I'm super interested in. Uh, I like past stuff Sucker Punch has done, and that looks like a setting and a character I can get into. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. What about you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Detroit, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Detroit. All right, cool. Cut the video there. <laughs> Pete just said the Detroit. Gardens Between, uh, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, Shadow of the Colossus as well. Yeah. And Ghost of Tsushima, but that's more of like, a, okay, you've, you've got me interested. Yeah. Right. But we'll see. Don't know much about it yet. Cool. All right, so that's all of Sony's new release date announcements, game announcements, whether they're indie studios, internal studios. We'll look forward next week to Horizon Zero Dawn and the Frozen Wilds. We'll be able to talk about it next week? Or no, it's coming out next week. Betcha. From uh, Gorilla. 
Guerrilla Games. Yeah, uh, I'm excited. Um, that's a whole new area in the game, right? To the open world game. It's supposed to be like 15 hours of gameplay. That's what this guy told me last night. Cool. During our private phone texts. The, uh, I'm really next. excited for that, mainly that's... because I've only played like 10 hours of the base game. <sighs> I have to finish that game too. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's, it's an excuse to go back. <sighs> well, I, I finished dude, it. I really liked it. <laughs> what came out, man? What came out? What? what the yeah. week after? Like, yeah, I know, but God damn it! This is like the same. It's, 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 it's a good game. It's the same it problem with the Phantom Pain. Everyone was like, "Yeah, I liked the 10, 15 hours I played of it." I finished Phantom whatever. Pain. I'm there with you. Yeah, but like you're the Jake in this situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no Don't ever say did. that. No to one me. else did. No, um, so th this is paid DLC, right? Yeah, I believe so. Cool. Mm -hmm. The yeah. Frozen Wilds. Yeah. Did I say that right? Yeah. That's out next week. We'll talk more about it in the lobby, I would assume, unless there's an embargo that I don't know we'll about. We'll talk about it in the lobby. The embargo is... Uh, I forget. Are you, you might get it soon, hopefully, from, mm -hmm. from Sony. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right. Uh, now we're going to talk, for those just joining on YouTube, Twitch, GameSpot, we're actually going to talk about games that came out last week that we played a lot of. Uh, I'll start with Wolfenstein 2. I want to talk about what makes it such a good shooter, because... The bullets. Yeah. That helps. <laughs> um... There's a lot to talk about, and Callie's not here. She reviewed it, which is a, it's unfortunate that she's not here. Uh, she gave it, which she did. she did a nine out of ten, but it's just a fantastic game, and I think a lot of us at this the here in the office are in agreement that it's good. I like it more than the New Order, which in itself was an amazing game uh, as a reboot of the series. It was great. My Machine Games, Swedish studio, right? Did uh did a great job <sighs> remaking this. Um, how long did this take me? It nice was like throw. a decent. I kind of went through guns blazing this, whereas I focus more on stealth in the New Order, but. On this, Steam, I had about 11 hours to finish. Okay. How, how long after the first game was this? Like, several years, right? Because uh, B... Or no, no, this is right after, five right? Five months. In the 60s. How about... Five months, John luc Yes. Okay, yeah, five months. It picks up right, right at the end. But yeah, you go, back, you go to Nazi-occupied America in the 60s, and uh, they kind of go for the whole counterculture thing, especially if you pick Wyatt. But anyway, that's all. The story's fantastic. The characters are great. They introduce new characters who I love. I love Super Special. Uh, we don't have to go too much into any spoilers, obviously. We talked about this last week, uh, but it was annoying because there was we couldn't talk past the first five chapters, and we're not going to get into any spoilers. Uh, we'll make sure of that on the show, but we can talk about the game overall now. Um, Jake, you did you finish it yesterday? Uh, yeah, ago? I finished it this weekend, Sunday, I think. And yeah, I know you're a huge fan of the New Order. Uh, which, how do you think this compares? I think this improves in almost every way. I think there's super splash right there. Sorry, I, I think there are some. Like, I thought BJ Blaskowitz's characterization in the first one was better, but I think they had to focus more on him because, you know, he seems like a meathead. Everyone's like, okay, he's probably not going to be that good of a character. That's a good point. And they really doubled down on that character development, and yeah. I thought he was a fantastic character. All of the monologues he had in the first one were amazing as well. And this, uh, I mean, he's still a great character, uh, but I think this one focuses on like a broader range of adding new characters, adding more uh, characterization to previous characters. And then I think overall gameplay is much better. Granted, I played on PS4, I think, for the first one, and PC on this, which was, you know, it felt like a huge step. But yeah, I mean, I, I loved this game. This is easily probably my top five. Mm -hmm. Top ten, if not top five. Yeah, it's... I think the game struck a much better balance between, like, it's bombast and kind of just all out, you know, Nazi killing, like you said, muscle head kind of, but also, like, the resistance fighting back. But also, like, it had a lot of uh, more sentimental moments. The first game had that same dichotomy, I would say, but this game straddles that line much better, I think, and it feels more natural. Oh, man, this game also just becomes batshit crazy in so many ways yeah. uh, in its story, but also, I mean, you, you're watching, he's... Just like the old game, you're dual wielding, but now you can mix and match weapons. So you can have a pistol in one hand, the machine pistol in the other, or the assault rifle in one hand, and the tri-barrel rotating shotgun in the other. I haven't finished it, but to hear you guys talk about how crazy it gets, uh, I mean, I think I'm about judging from... I'm on the train here. This is actually legit where I last stopped oh, playing. You ain't seen nothing. <laughs> so that's the thing. So the I to, already uh, feel like well. I already feel like I've seen a lot of crazy shit. These are new too. Uh, you just saw the uh, gun upgrades. They also have the perks that you get for doing certain kills, like the thrown hatchet kills or the stealth kills Man. or killing a commander before they alert the rest of the reinforcements. And those perks are still there, but now you can also upgrade weapons. Uh, and there's like three upgrades for each weapon, I believe, and uh, I, they're all super useful. There's something to be said about that that progression system is so appealing to like to be able to like just the, to combine like straight gameplay with progression in the same vein of how you want to play the game you know what i mean like if you want to be more stealthy well 
you know, t- have six more takedowns and, and you can crouch. Um, or when crouched, you can, you can walk faster. Because um, I, I, for one, am like playing really stealth and reserved. Um, I just like playing that, that style. But uh, yeah, no it's, cool. it's cool to, like, to, to just focus on stuff you want to focus on. Like, I don't really care about dual wielding as much, despite this game kind of pushing you to dual wield. Uh, you really want to be always moving and shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, the stealth works at times, but there are set pieces, so to speak, where like, nope, you cannot stay put. You're moving around. They're always flanking. They, dude, enemies are always flanking you. Like, yeah, more than any AI other game, I feel like I've, I've, I've always had a guy directly behind me sneaking around. Well, it's interesting because Doom 2016 was so much about forward movement specifically and constantly moving. And if your health was low, it wanted you to melee people so you get health. And if your ammo is low, it wants you to chainsaw people so you get ammo. And then you would be constantly seeking chainsaw fuel to keep that loop going. Uh, this game is kind of that forward movement and it's trying to stay moving because, like you said, Rob, they're trying to flank you. But it's also you got to know when to take cover because yeah. one complaint I have about this game, the feedback when you're getting it's it seems minor, but you're getting shot at so much in this game. I wish the feedback on it, like even in like it, I don't know that I'm losing health so often and I look down and I have 20 health left and no armor. Right. I wish that was something other than that was the case. Yeah, like any kind of like, I mean, generally most games have like a, you know, like a blood red vignette or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like any indication that you're taking health. I kind of agree with you. It's I do like it's, that it's old school and like you're actually picking up health yeah. and armor. That's that's fuck, that's right, great. Yeah. yeah, and Doom was like that as well, right? Like Yeah. Um I do wish I knew I was getting shot more. And also I you can you can do hard saves whenever you want. I didn't even know this until later in the game until like the last fight that it was actually a hard save and wouldn't just go back to the checkpoint. Jean-Luc told me I was like what the fuck? Yeah, one nice thing about playing on PC is you just hit F5. And yeah. Then I mean, it's, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty fast on console as well if you just, you have to manually do it, but uh, it takes a little bit longer. But um, I thought there were some some spikes in the difficulty that hurt the pacing, but if I had been saving, doing hard saves the whole time, maybe I wouldn't have minded as much. But other than that, yeah, it's a tough game and I feel like it earns it. Um, I'm looking forward to maybe over the holidays or something when I have more time. Going back, picking Fergus as opposed to Wyatt as my, uh, the supporting character that you could choose. They, they, you go back, you make a choice from the first game right at the beginning of this. And, uh, yeah, and I, I love the setting. Maybe it's just because it's kind of this, uh, not even post-apocalyptic, but it might as well be uh, Nazi-occupied America. You're going to New Orleans, New York, Roswell. Uh, it, it's great. There's a, there's a cool thing, too, that I, I mean, I didn't even know about. I don't, I don't think a lot of people knew about until later, at least in the office, was that those Enigma codes you get, you can unlock side missions that let you return to other areas and kind of do, in like, that, that's really cool. That's pretty substantial, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it adds a good level of replay yeah. value. And I noticed, like, I kind of hate bringing this up, but I know noticed a lot of, like, in the Steam reviews, it's, like, six hours of gameplay, four hours of cutscenes. Like, I don't want to play a game like this. And it's, like, well, there's all those side quests that you can do. And they're actually pretty fun to unlock with those Enigma codes. Which also, those cutscenes, yeah. every single one of them are fun. I know, they're amazing. so well but it just done. Discount amazing. like your own ability did, to follow yeah. the story. Yeah, it's like, did you watch them? They're so good. Like some of them are. Yeah, but they're cutscenes, dude. Flush. Yeah. Oh man, some of, some of them are like some of like the best the choreographed people, scenes I've yeah, ever seen. People in the game. make comparisons to like Inglorious Bastards, but in this game, I think that holds even more weight. There are several scenes in this where you're you're in control of BJ, but you're in the scene, and it's it is it's scripted so well, and uh, it's tense as fuck. It's really good. Like, I know I've talked about in The Office, but in one of the demos that we played beforehand, they showed that scene where uh, BJ meets with the uh, grassroots resistance yeah, in New I Orleans. That. And, and there's that oh, scene no, where he's like, he's, what is this? Like, I, I don't toot my ho- own horn, except literally. Yeah, and the and clarinet like player. Playing jazz in the background, and the camera's just spinning around their yeah. conversation as they're having this, like, it's really good. battle of wits. It's so good. It, that's kind of, it reminded me of Mad Max, like how the music they're playing becomes part of the soundtrack. Yeah, like, or like a or Birdman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, oh, I was just to say, like, um, and and not even in just the cutscenes. Um, I think, I think this game really handled the like, more like a uh, the in game, like when you're on like your your sub, for instance, and you're kind of walking around and you're running into like people interacting with each other. All of those are orchestrated and polished really well. Where like, I I feel like so many times I've I've seen games or like uh, moments where you can just hear the breaks in dialogue or like choreography where it's like it's segmented and it it's doesn't have that refined like if I'm cutting you like for instance if, I, if I'm gonna cut off your dialogue right that needs to be me cutting off and overlapping your VO right and like I don't know just like the polish of like 
seeing people interact with each other is so satisfying. Um, and there's everything has so much weight. And, and, and like to to even mention Inglorious Bastards again, because there is, I feel like, a lot of that vibe. But like, I feel like it pushes in many scenes, like pushes the the boundaries a little farther, like as yeah. far as like the weight and the the gravity of like uh, so many themes that they're like they're dealing with. Um, I, I yeah, I can't wait yeah. to finish it. But as a shooter, uh, this game is just fantastic. It feels great and like the, how gritty and heavy and like almost like just like messy the shooting is makes sense for BJ and just. He's an angry character, so you're just flooding, dude, doing dual shotguns down a hallway when there's like six guys in front of you. You don't even have to aim, you just shoot, especially if you get the ricochet upgrade. And it's the most satisfying shot. feeling in the world, <laughs> yeah. And I think as a shooter, this game, I think the first game was great about encouraging stealth or combat, but I think it relied too often on just sandbox after sandbox after sandbox. And that can be great, but I feel like it was a little rote at that point. This one, I think, knows when to ease up on that and give you these corridors where you can actually go down, like sneak around in these internal areas. Um, I think it's very good at choreographing some of these fights and then letting you loose in these smaller sandbox environments uh, to fight these these mechs or to survive this way or to stealth through this way. Uh, I think this game is much better at, uh, aside from those difficulty spikes, I think it's better pacing than the New Order. Um, and the New Order, I think, too often relied on, here's your objective. Like, uh, freeing these people from prison, that part was awesome. That was really fun. But, again, I think uh, New Colossus knows when to get out of your way in a great way. Um, and if it feels great, it some of the, I think it's great in the way you're actually coming up to these that are kind of climaxing. It's these, what could be just this dumb mech boss fight. And I'm not saying something like that doesn't exist. I'm not saying it does, but like <laughs> instead they could put you up against like just a horde of new kind of like mechanized enemies or the enemy variety is great too. Like the dogs can come rushing at you and you're meanwhile trying to kill this commander, but also there's a panzer hunt coming around the corner. It's going to breathe fire on you. Um, this game's yeah. fantastic. I, I kind of agree with you. Like, not to say that like the first order was was more linear, but there were moments that I've had so far in uh, New Colossus where like the game's clearly telling me, like for instance, in like New York, it's telling me to like go down into the subway, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do a little more exploring, and like an en enemy popped out that I felt like I would not have run into had I gone down the path that they laid out. Like mm -hmm. I felt like there were a lot of moments where my choice like had an impact in the game, yeah. and that was rewarding. Yeah. Any last thoughts on Wolfenstein 2? Do you play much of it yet? No, you've been focused on I would be talking if I had played it, Mike. Come on. It's, no, you played dude, a little bit, but I'm just saying, like, I didn't want to exclude you completely. <laughs> I know you've been busy with Mario, and now you got Horizon, so yeah. you should uh, play this game. My last thought is, like, this game is so freaking funny. <laughs> it's, it's I've got some I, And sad. It's, it's sad, a, and it's, yeah, it's it's, an, it's definitely a roller coaster, but, like, funny. I love yeah. when people can, like, knock out of the park with, like, jokes and stuff. Like, God. There's, there's... Yeah, I love it when like you're t when BJ and Anya are talking over the the radio. Oh yeah, and then they <laughs> say something kind of intimate. So Anya being is the one. They're they're both uh, they have twins on the way, and they say something intimate, and then someone like <clears throat> they're like, is this is this channel public? They're like, is someone else on this channel? They're like, yes, <laughs> Max <laughs> Haas. <laughs> yeah, Max Haas. It's kind of like the Hodor. Um, this game's fantastic. It's one of my. Uh, it's one of the more, not surprising, I think I expected quality out of machine games with this, considering the New Order and the Old Blood, if you played the standalone DLC, which kind of goes back chronologically before both of these. Uh, I think they made use, great use of the environment. It's a great shooter in its own right. Uh, it feels great. It's tough in a good way, for the most part, aside from some spikes, but it's got a hard save, and it's uh, forgiving enough when it needs to be. I want to play on Uber, the hardest difficulty, and take it 30 days to complete it. It'll be fun, though. Um, yeah, all right, cool. Now... Did you play a Mar Super Mario Odyssey? <laughs> Mike, I'd be taught. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. Play Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, you gave it. 50 hours, 60 yeah, hours. We don't want to reduce something to a score, but you gave this game a 10 out of 10 on GameSpot, <laughs> which means it is essential. It's an essential game. So if you're play. watching this or somehow coming across the video, you should play Super Mario Odyssey if you have any passing interest in video games and uh, on Nintendo yeah. Switch. And if you have a Switch, yeah. Um, walk me through it. What? Where is why is this such a great 3D platformer oh. when 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 Mario is known for these with Super Mario 64, Super Mario Galaxy games, Super Mario Sunshine? Even though I don't really like well, that game. Well, it's very different from all those games, despite sort of having the same general 3D platformer premise. Uh, more than anything, Super Mario Odyssey is a is a playground for discovery, and uh, you know the, the whole deal is like you're collecting moons and and in the past maybe you would set out in certain levels to like collect a star and you get sent back to the beginning like this game like you know you find one moon you continue to the next one and if you're you're really aware of what you're doing and you're really aware of what Mario is capable of and that includes how he can use his environments and enemies to his advantage you can find a moon and thus feel rewarded like every other minute 
And when you're doing that, you're also going through like, you know, these environments that seem somewhat small, like on paper, but once you're actually moving and shaking within them, there's so much to see and do. And it, it just, it just feels sort of like a, a never ending, a never ending like hunt for these things and discovery for what the game has that maybe you didn't see immediately. This game is just like playing with your endorphins as, as you're getting like a moon or coins or purple coins or finding some sort of secret every like 30 seconds, I feel. Right, like. and you're using that to go to open up new worlds, yeah. to get a new outfit for Mario, you know. Um, and that just, is, oh, sorry. sorry. No, 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 you go, yeah, go ahead. No, you go. I was gonna say, but that endorphin, like, fuck, I didn't know that was a moon. <laughs> Dude, there are so many moons. <laughs> 836. Like, like you just you just can't even begin to spoil it. Like uh what I was going to say is that you know not that it's a bad thing but like as the game progresses and you you know you you get past that uh main quest, like those endorphins are still there but like you you find yourself like really kind of uh, working a lot more harder to get these moons. Like they they sort come, of, they, they do open up a new set of moons, and they literally tell you where they are. Yeah, but then it's yeah, it's like after that, which is sort of the post game, and then the real post game. Is mm -hmm. Yeah, because you could beat the game with what is it, two hundred fifty moons? No, oh, less, less than, than that. that. Yeah. Less than Sorry, that. I think it's like eighty or ninety is the minimum. Like someone okay. did the, a speed run recently in like eighty something minutes, and I think they had about ninety moons. Oh damn! I did it like eighty minutes. Or something like Shit, that. I have a. I think I have more than that. I'm only on the Snow Kingdom right now. Yeah, I mean, because like, you can have more. Than that, yeah, right? so the game basically sh shows you like, okay, we need this many moons to power your ship to get to the next kingdom, and once you visit every kingdom, then you kind of get to the end, and mm -hmm. you can get there pretty quickly if you just sort of follow the required moon counts and then proceed to your next step. But you know, I I beat the game with like 150 moons, and there were seven <laughs> about 700 left for me to find. I'm currently at 520 ish, and that's sort of. Uh, like the the last big milestone the game sets for you is 500. So I, I'm beyond that at this point, but I'm still enjoying the game and I'm still you know playing it every now and then. I, I did put in like like 40 to 50 hours in just like four days or something like that, three or four days. So it was kind of a lot for a minute, but it's it says a lot that I can keep going back to this game and I don't really tire of it. Uh, yeah, I think uh, our friend over at Giant Bomb Dan Reichert found all the moons correct. Well, friend, I guess, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're just jealous. Uh, uh, yeah, he he went pretty crazy on this game. Ham. That's very like him to do that. <laughs> um, I, so let me ask you this: uh, before you guys had finished, or at least before you had gotten up to like the six hundred or, so, or sorry, like four hundred or something moons, you were saying a lot of it is easy. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe that's beside the point, but I do want to talk about the difficulty because I am finding it is very easy overall, and I'm not like especially great at platformers. I'm I'm pretty decent at this game, but. It's obviously, it's very inventive, it's very creative, it just kind of like plays with your imagination and what you right. can think of these environments, but... That's the challenge. Right, and also, but there are there are some platforming parts where you're going through those cap doors and then getting on those rockets to launch into space for those harder platforming sections. Mm -hmm. Did you feel the difficulty was, uh, was like, well tailored throughout? Yeah, and I actually think there's a much bigger discussion that, that we should have here, which is sort of the opposite of what I think everyone was talking about a couple weeks ago, like difficult games are great in their own way well so are games that are that are very forgiving and and easy in a sense like mm -hmm. i think mario is the perfect argument for why both types of games can exist like yeah even if you fail in the sections that you're talking about you're not actually losing much except for the time you spent to die like 10 coins you can easily get back yeah like the coins are so easy to get and even when you run out of coins in total like there's no such thing as a game over in the screen that doesn't exist there's no one-up mushroom there's no lives as it were like this is abandoned anything that made mario sort of like uh if you can call it that like a threatening experience where you can put so much time and energy into something and then not get there and have to start a whole kingdom or world over mm -hmm. and just feel like man that's really frustrating does that mean this game is bad because it's easy? I would say no, unless you you need to prove something or you can only enjoy difficult games. Like this game can be surprisingly difficult when it comes to the puzzle solving, which mm -hmm. is really how you use Mario and the environment to acquire the moon that you can see, but you're like, how the hell do I get to it? Mm. Um, so it can be surprisingly challenging in those ways. Towards the very end of the game, you do unlock some stuff that is sort of like a gauntlet where if you die you know you, there's no checkpoint you have to go back to the beginning and, and that takes the form of a boss rush and is a really difficult series of platforming sections um and in that sense it seems to harken back to something like uh, mario 64 where it is so much about the platforming and really yeah. a test of your skill this is more a test of your 
um, strategizing and execution in so many ways. And even like your ability to switch up your perspective, which I think kind of helps in this game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are there are certain times where it helps to really like line it up in like a 2D perspective and not just the retro sections, but like even when 3D platforming or go to a top-down perspective as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and even just challenging yourself to always change the camera angle and your perspective yeah. because that's the only way you can find all the moons. And that's the only way towards the end of the game that you can really make progress. But that also makes these seemingly small open worlds that much more interesting because no matter where you look, you will ultimately be facing something that is worth seeking. It's, and it's, yeah, and, and, and coming back with a different perspective, like a lot of times I've run into that where like uh, I've spent a lot of time on a little mini game. Uh, Mike, you saw <laughs> me battling one uh, the other day and it's forgiving in the sense where it's like, you know what, I'm just going to come back because there's so much to do in this playground as a whole that I have no problem walking away from things and that's where the challenge is like is is bearable in in my perspective where it's just like yeah I can just I'll come back it's not a problem there's so much going on yeah. I can I can get more moons uh somewhere else but you can you can pretty much get any moon right from the start if you know where it is and how to like handle your environment. Mario's yeah. outfits don't give him any special powers. It's the enemies he capture and they're limited to these environments and you can't take them out. Mm -hmm. So you've got all the tools you need to get the moons pretty much unless I'm forgetting something. I, I would say like some of the worlds you'd have to defeat a specific boss to like get open up new areas to moons. Like oh, get sure. The free sure, something Nautilus. like that. Ability wise, yeah. you're right. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's anything. <clears throat> uh, speaking of abilities and whatnot, so he's got a pretty diverse skill set in this game. Uh, one thing that people were worried about was like maybe an, a reliance on motion controls. Was that the case here? Did you think it's entirely optional? I think that's been blown out of proportion after the review. There's yeah. a couple moves because uh, Mario can throw his hat. Obviously, he can throw his hat in a few different ways. Some of those extra ways you can manage through button presses. Other ones you have to use motion controls. Uh, in handheld mode, throwing your hat up or down isn't great and I don't even know if it works to be honest with you I haven't been able to do it properly mostly because I don't want to like fling my entire switch up and yeah. down holding it by the controllers but the, the only times where I had to do that was when there it was like a couple moons where it was like okay clearly I need to shake to get my hat up there because I can't jump that high so I popped the joy cons off my switch and just did it and put them back on it was like 20 seconds over mm -hmm. and done with if you have a pro controller you can do everything that you could with the joy cons um, <clears throat> so yeah there are a couple force motion controls things in here that's not great. Like no one loves to be forced to do that, especially when it seems like they probably could have found a way to do it with buttons. But it's certainly not like a, an issue. No. Well, yeah. Well, there are some um, the spin attacks. So if you're using the Joy Cons, you flick both Joy Cons to either side simultaneously. But if you're playing on handheld, you can, or even on a regular controller, you could just also rotate the left stick right. before you do it. Kind of like right. in uh, the older Zelda 3D games, you, it's, you could either charge with B or f yeah. spin the stick, and that works. Um, with, a, with a pro controller, it feels supernatural because you basically just like you let go of one side of it, hold to the other handle, and just sort yeah. of flick your wrist. It feels like you're throwing a freaking hat. Yeah, in a sense. And, and so, it, yeah, in, in that respect, it is you know a split second as far as the timing, right? Like it is feasibly quicker to do this than it is to do that spin move. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that, that spin move where the hat cir yeah. uh, circles you is actually pretty vital like for a lot of scenarios as far as like helpful. protection. Helpful. Sure. Vital, vital is taking it too far because the game never requires it of you. It, that's, it, it presents it as like a, an efficiency thing. Yes. And that's what I was going to say w with like that moon that you were talking about that you couldn't get with the hat throw. Yeah. I wouldn't say like there is always a way around that. Always. Like, I've never had the need where it's like, I cannot get here or grab this with without there are, my head. There are definitely a couple moons where really? you, you had can that, only do that. You, you had that problem. Where it's like, confirmed. Yeah, I know it's a thing. It's oh, just, fuck. Yeah, yeah. To do the spin move? No, the no, half no, no, throw. No. Oh, and there's gosh, another one like the frog. If you shake the controller, the frog does an extra flip and will jump a little bit higher. Same and with the Goombas, too. There's a sure. moon in the Cap Kingdom that you can't get unless you do that. What? Can you describe that? That's crazy. I can't. There's also, the, sorry, there's also the moon. I think it's in the Wooded Kingdom where there's these, it's it's called a weird, a strange neighborhood and the, the platforms are moving like apartments and you have to go back and stack all the Goombas. I don't think you can make some of those jumps without shaking it because the Goombas jump much higher when you shake right. it as opposed to just the hop. Mm. So I could definitely see, me, I don't, the moon I'm thinking of particularly, maybe it's ringing a bell with other people. I don't think I could have done it without the shake jump with the Goomba, stack Goombas. I could be wrong though. But to yeah, your point, I, I, th I can see that being the case where there are some moons where you would need... There's only two that I can really think of where shaking is, yeah. is required. One of them Damn. is the Cap Kingdom one, and then there's another one that I'd I can't remember where it was, but yeah. 
But it is interesting you talk about how this game kind of challenges your imagination in terms of what you, how you see the levels. Because I think Mario Galaxy, when it came out, was much more about those smaller sandboxes and also being kind of creative with how they use 3D. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of like right. those spherical worlds. And I think both games play with uh, 3D level design in an awesome way. I mean, Mario 64 did, and that's a precedence forever. But... Um, I didn't. I don't. I'm not a huge fan of Sunshine. Maybe I need to go back to it. I know that game has its a lot of defenders for people who aren't super stoked on it. Just I, a lot of people like that game. But I love the Mario Galaxy games, and I think this game kind of continues that legacy of 3D Mario's playing with level design in a cool way. Uh, to your point, it's very much. I, every time I go into a world, I see it like at an aesthetic level, and then I know there's a ton that's gonna unfold before me. Yeah, I mean, some on, of these places have over 100 moons. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe just one I can think of. But yeah, like, it gets that high. I mean, I, 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 was, I spent, like, maybe five hours in Toastarina town. Or not the town. What was it? The Desert Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, but with to- Toastarina town in it. Um, Steam Gardens. What would yeah, you say? <laughs> I love that song. Where would you area. say this? Uh, I'm not asking you for a definitive ranking or list, but All you right, say, so 3D Mario <laughs> games, Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, uh, Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. And if you want to do, like, 3D World and 3D, 3D Land, Land and factor those in. Um, where does this fit on that list? Is it's up there? <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's up there. You know, I can only speak to my personal experience, but it's it, I, f- I find it really hard to compare all those games because yeah, they have Mario and they have some other consistent things, but they're all very different at their core. They all offer very different takes on 3D platforming. Again, despite the similarities you see between them, uh, but you know if I if you put all of them in front of me right now, I, you know I think I'd probably play Mario 64 in this. Um, the Galaxy games I really like. Sunshine didn't really do it for me. Uh, 3D Land was interesting. 3D World was a little too messy with the multiplayer stuff. It wasn't required, but I felt like the, the game really... It shined for that in some ways, but it also didn't succeed in that way. But if you talk about multiplayer with this game as well, Cappy is an autonomous being. Like You don't have to just be the second player flicking the controller and that's it. <laughs> you can separate from Mario's head and go and do your own shit and troll Mario if you want to as well. I mean, the gameplay conceit of taking over other creatures alone is enough that makes this game fun, even outside of the level design. I mean, they're showing in the the Wooded Kingdom. I don't even know what they are, those sprouts that, uh, yeah. those those seeds that sprout the legs. They go, yeah. They're so fun to use. Called, they're called uproots. <laughs> and then those caterpillars uh, in the Lost Kingdom that those you yeah. stretch. Yeah. Really, they're yeah, so yeah. fun to use. And like Rob, you had said, this is the first time in a while you've played a platforming game where like you never felt like the game was working against you. Like you said, yeah. like it, made, it gave you such good confidence in your precision. Oh, for Kick sure. the ball. Yeah, yeah, like there, there was one moment where um, I think it was in the Luncheon yeah. Kingdom where like, oh yeah, this is us doing the multiplayer. I actually, you know, people were kind of ragging on this. I thought the two player to be pretty fun. Yeah, Some, I, know, I don't know, I don't know how long. I mean, I, I feel like I'd have to play more, but like for for what it is and what it could have been, like it could have been just like a tacked on, like you know, here, press A and you can like launch Cappy, and that's all you do as a second player. Like you have a lot of control. And I think if you worked really well with um, someone, like you could do some, like th- you could do some moves that, like I think, were not. Oh, I gotta get that. Um, you weren't <laughs> able to in like uh, by yourself, right? Like, like you could be you could be multitasking at the same time. Like I, I can be like getting coins as Peter's, like you know, jumping around, stomping on Goombas or something like that. It was it was neat to see those work. Um, stacking Goombas is so fun. Yeah, it feels great. Yeah, but I would say is yeah. There was a, there was a moment where like I, so many platforming games where you're you, there is a fear, right? Like when you when you're dealing with ultra precise platforms that you're trying to jump on and land. Sometimes there are just these moments in games where it's like you know the the controller or the uh, the movement is ultra sensitive, and you you just you have that like second guess and you fall off. There were times like, where like you know, platforms raising and lowering where like when lowered the the area of that I can step on is ultra small. Like I feel like any other game I would have like seen that and be like, no, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait like that two, three seconds before I, I jump. But like this game it was like, no, I can totally I can totally nail it. Um and that happened like time and time again where I was doing like pretty what felt risky moves, but just fully aware that like I can I can do anything. Like, it is it is so natural and seamless? Like controlling Mario. Um, it's also like one of the happiest games I've ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah right. that, that, that does fit. Like, it's like uh, Enigma Theory on uh, in the Twitch chat was saying. Yeah, the difficulty isn't in the platforming; it's not the point of game. It's all about finding all these collectibles and exploring. And that's if you want to consider that difficult. That's how it fits into this game. And like you were just saying, that fits. 
I don't think very, very brutal platforming would fit within what this game is going for. It, well, the, the sections they add in feel good because they are sort of some of the only distinct levels where, like, you enter a pipe or a door and you end up in a different place. You're not really on the map of the open world anymore. So it, it segments those sections from the main game. And I think it works, especially because they tend to come after you've beaten the story the first time. Well, yeah. not the first time. You beat the first major storyline before moving on to what's left, if you will. Also, yeah. this scene is a pretty good example of how this game is so freaking strange. It's super weird. <laughs> it's it's, Donk City, so I'd, I'd I laugh been there now. I laugh so, so hard at this scene where you're just seeing sheeple. Just going from one door to the next. Like, what are they doing? <laughs> is there like a meat factory they're like falling into? I like, like how it's all inside of a building too. There is a moon <laughs> factory in this town. Oh yeah, I that's just right. Just want to take those moons. Yeah, that was. This is the first thing they showed off, right? That you actually go to like a real world, not just the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, but sorry, I'm just realizing the moon factory establishes why you can just buy moons at the store. Oh my oh. god, there yeah. we go. Shit, it You're makes totally sense right. Now. Lore busted, or no? Lore confirmed? I don't know. Myth busted. Nice. All I right, think, anyway. Sorry, Jake, what? I was just going to say, one of the most satisfying, like, possessions that I've found, or it's it's pretty obvious you'll come across it, but that woodpecker. Yep. That, like, yeah. stick in, and then, because I love that mechanic of, oh, like, totally. flicking the stick. And then when you, or something when like that. you combine that, it's so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the same goes for the Metro Kingdom, uh, New York City. Just, like, the verticality of all the buildings and all those poles. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's such joy in, like, you know, I think they're called pylons, or the, yeah. the spark pylons, where you're just you're zipping around, you're in midair, flinging to a pole, flicking up, chasing a rabbit. Like, it's so rewarding just to like control Mario and just run around that game. Like, you get yeah. so distracted, it's great. It does a really good job of distilling. I think um, uh, I don't want to say what makes video games great as a whole, but it, it really does sort of give you a game that controls really well, makes you happy to be in its world, presents challenges, but then doesn't actually punish you for going out of your comfort zone trying to get them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah. Super Mario Odyssey, man. Play the game. Ten out of ten. Go play have one. Yeah. Uh, reviews up on GameSpot. Yeah. You can go read Pete's review. Go see it on YouTube. It is, uh, it's up there for your eye holes. Go check it out. It's a great game. One of three great games. We talked about Assassin's Creed. I've fallen in love with that game over the weekend. We don't really have much time, but uh, you should play Assassin's Creed Origins, too. We also gave that a good review. Um, cool. As always, we have a giveaway. Uh, Call of Duty World War II released this Friday. Uh, a few of us here are playing it, but in the meantime, here is the giveaway. It's a poster collection. There are 40 posters in there uh, from past Call of Duty games, in, uh, also including World War II. <laughs> There's a moleskin notebook up there up front and some sort of uh, field manual art book. Kind Did of. you see the field manual? No. It's actually really cool. I, I'm, I'm not really one to pimp giveaways, but... The amount of detail went into that field, man. They, they, like, someone, like, basically it's all, like, rustled in, like, aged papers. Is there blood on it? There's, like, pinned photos with, like, actual paper clips. It's, like, really neat as far as like, the aesthetic of, like, it's it, it feels like an old manual. Like, <laughs> like I, I imagine someone taking the, all these pages and, like, crumpling them and then straightening them out and then pouring the edges. On it. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they really went to town on that. I just wanted to say that was cool. Yeah, Call of Duty World War II releases Friday. Is the embargo like Thursday or release or what? Today? Damn, that's two days away. Shit. Miguel Concepcion's reviewing that, right? He's in Japan, but I think he's reviewed it already. I don't know when we're putting it up. Can you talk about it or no? <laughs> Just being quiet so you keep talking. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I will keep talking tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, cool. You have a. Can you talk about the time? Uh, I could if I could remember. But okay, I don't so remember. tomorrow we'll have our Call of Duty World War II review up from Sledgehammer Games. Uh, Former Visceral guys, sad to say that that studio is closed down. But Glenn Schofield and Michael Condry are doing well because this game looks good. Um, yeah, so that giveaway, as always, if you don't follow GameSpot on Twitter, go do so and then retweet said giveaway tweet. Uh, we'll be picking winners throughout the week. You could be one of them. Uh, we have our fourth camera on the back room, correct, Jean-Luc? Waiting for him to pipe yes. in. Yes. Can you transfer to that camera quick, if you don't mind? Oh, so there he is, Jean-Luc, right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> our tricaster. He's pretty pissed. Uh, it's his hey, birthday today. Jesus. John Luke. Oh, happy John Luke's birthday. birthday. I figured I'd uh, throw it back to him. There's Eric Tay and Richard Lee in our back room as always. Can you believe he's forty? Can you, yeah. Can you believe he's no thirty nine? Nice. Uh, so sex, anyway, the sex number, right? Thank you, Richard Lee, Eric Tay, and birthday boy Jean Luc in the back room. And uh, also, uh, Jean Luc and Eric kind of announced it yesterday on their Destiny stream. But 
As always, uh, and I get brought it up at the beginning of the show, shit. Uh, Extra Life, November 17th, starting at noon Pacific. Uh, here are these terrible pictures of all of us. We're going to be bouncing between the U.S., Ugh. U.K., and Australia uh, throughout that weekend, kind of right before uh, the American Thanksgiving. Uh, so that'll be fun. We're going to be playing some multiplayer games, doing some dumb bets, I'm sure, to raise some money for a charity. Presumably it started off uh, for, for ill children. So see if we can... Uh, Continue that trend and raise some money this year. Rob's gonna hold that face for seventy-two I hours. Hate, yeah, I, I fucking hate that photo. Yeah. So <laughs> not to shift it on you, but you look like you like we're taking a mug shot after. I probably <laughs> like, was. Uh, cool. So that'll be and yeah, uh, Dvorak on Twitch was just saying the Minecraft server. We always have a Minecraft server where people build stuff throughout oh, the weekend. Oh, that's coming so we'll, back. Someone else. I think yes. Mary okay. usually used to set up, but we'll do it. I think. Yeah. Someone had mentioned me doing it. We'll definitely figure out how to bring it back. I'll, they uh, have contacted us. It, it should be. It will be done. What did he say? They have contacted us. It will be done. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll have cool. the Minecraft server for those asking. Uh, for those who don't know, we just kind of people, fans build just cool stuff throughout the weekend, and we go into it and explore what they've been doing. Sometimes it's a maze, and they'll go in and rearrange it while we're going through it to fuck with us. It's fun. Uh, so that'll be uh, a long weekend, but fun weekend uh, for a worthwhile cause. As always, thanks for joining us. The lobby every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we'll be back next week talking Call, Call of Duty World War II. Uh, Battlefront will be right on the horizon. I don't think we'll be able to talk too much about Battlefront 2 yet. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll talk about Stranger Things Season 2. Horizon. And Horizons DLC. Thank you, Frozen Wilds. Uh, but as always, we'll see you next week. And in the meantime, uh, stay tuned to GameSpot. Late Trail.